Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Cash and we are back in our processed food educational series. <sighs> it's delicious. Now, I want to remind everybody that processed food does take a lot of flack. And I hope after going through this little course, you can find it in your heart to ease up on it a little bit. I firmly believe that the discourse on whether or not processed food is good or bad is actually missing the point entirely. And the question is not whether or not processed food is good or bad, and to think more in terms of why do we process food to begin with. And thinking in those terms, I think it would provide some clarity with a lot of decisions that are made surrounding nutrition in food and culture in the mainstream media. Now, angry foodies have taken the term processed food and turned it into everything that is wrong with health and nutrition in the United States, and now it's starting to branch a little bit international. Now that we have an idea uh, that processed food is really a process versus a food, right, and understanding how since it's so poorly defined for everybody else that isn't in the know, that it's a convenient way to leverage and get attention in multiple areas in addiction, health, medicine, fitness, nutrition, politics, environment, sustainability. You know, it's crazy how much people use the term to leverage arguments in those arenas. And overall, it appears processed food is kind of a four-letter word, and that bugs me. I just don't think that should be the case. And I, I think it's ridiculous to think the only things that are good in the world are unprocessed, whole, chemical-free, or whatever, and that everything that isn't to those things is inherently bad. <laughs> Everything is so poorly defined, I don't think it's possible to build a balanced diet of perfect food. All foods have benefits, all foods have deficits, all foods have pros, and all foods have cons. And when you look at the psychological side of things, there are a plethora of cognitive distortions. Things are blown out of proportion, things are black and white, things are either catastrophic or the holy grail, things are very personalized, negatives are magnified, things have broad and sweeping generalizations, things are viewed as right, wrong, good and bad, things have arbitrary rules that just make no sense, and things like processed foods are, are stereotyped, okay? And remember, this isn't psychology, this is biology. Everything is on a continuum. It's all shades of gray. It's not a matter of, is this product processed or unprocessed? It's a matter of, well, how processed is it? And what data do I have to qualify or challenge the current opinion on this food's potential deficits or benefits? And what are the ratio between those two things? Is junk food processed? Probably yes. <laughs> is processed food junk? Hell no. It's not. Okay, heck, even the term junk food is still kind of fuzzy, but I think most people in general have some idea of what it means without too much disagreement. And it typically has to do with calorie density. <laughs> like, you look at that thing, you're like, there's a ton of calories in there, and it's in a package, it's probably junk. And honestly, that's not a terrible way to go about making nutrition decisions in an uncontrolled environment. Asterisk, okay? Asterisk. And in general, I, I think swapping processed food to junk food in terms of colloquial terminology, like I said, it, it engenders a more balanced diet and allows people to include many foods that it would have otherwise been banned if you just said processed foods are off the table. Like, no more canned beans, everybody. Like, come on, give me a break. <laughs> and uh, being that restrictive with a person's diet is both self-righteous and elitist. It's easy for media outlets, content outlets, critics, and angry foodies to use fear to manipulate people into feeling bad about the decisions they make, slumping a perfectly reasonable food choice into baskets of either good or bad, when good or bad isn't part of the equation to begin with. The biological world operates on a different set of rules and rules that no good list or naughty list could possibly encompass in a way that makes sense. And ironically enough, it, it boils down to these two things. The deficits of some foods are magnified while the benefits are shrunk. And the, the benefits of some foods are magnified while their deficits are shrunk. <laughs> Nuance is good. Semantics are good. And understanding the difference between personal health and public health is of key importance here. Thinking globally, globally by the population is the priority. One size fits all, it's impossible. But one size fits most is reasonable, and unfortunately that re leaves room for a population to be vocal about their negative experiences, and people that are vocal about their negative experiences are going to inherently be louder than people with a neutral or positive experience. See, this confuses people who shouldn't even be in the conversation, but are now involved because the people who are negative about their experiences are so loud. And this is part of what causes controversy, a lot of what causes controversy. And it's regrettable to me that complex, multifactorial issues must be still down into shoulds and shouldn'ts. Science is not here to find the answer. Science is here to help ask better questions. And for that reason, everything is open for debate. 
That also means that common sense and anecdotal evidence must be combined with academic knowledge we have to come up with a reasonable consensus about the recommendations we make about food. Whole, unprocessed organic foods, they might be coming from half a world away, not local at all. Hell, they might pose health risks, have some toxicity, or be dangerous. Formulated foods might be local and provide practical and helpful benefits that you may not expect. You get shot in the stomach and need to be fed through a tube, you're not going to be eating chia seeds to get by during that time, okay? <laughs> now, using a distorted list of rules, relying on finalities like shoulds or shouldn'ts, good or bad, etc., this is legitimate cause for concern. Striking fear into people because the product has more than a few ingredients or that it takes an eighth grade education to pronounce the word continues to push people down what I think is a dangerous path. And it kind of engenders turning people into absent-minded conformists, which is not something I'm a fan of. Avoiding technology is impossible. Humans need it to have life as they know it, and avoiding chemicals is impossible. Knowing what a chemical is lights up a path towards reason. Telling people what's good and bad, telling people what their opinion should be, that's dangerous. Helping people understand basic science allows them to use their own intelligence and reasoning skills to inform their own decisions. You stack the cards in their favor, no matter what decision they'll make will be a decent one. Some chemicals make food spoil. Some chemicals keep food from spoiling. Some chemicals will kill us. Some chemicals will kill germs so the germs don't kill us. Chemicals, like vitamins, minerals, and protein, are also the reason we stay alive and healthy. Without a shadow of a doubt, food processing methods prevent people from getting sick and keep foods healthier for longer. People who look to science for the answer they end up falling up short and being upset one way or the other because science isn't here to provide the answers. Science is here to experiment, gather data, and ask the next question. Science is here to help us learn from our mistakes and illuminate how the world as we know it works, not to tell the future. This makes it hard for scientists to compete with angry, opinionated writers and other alarmists who are so completely sure about everything they say, and very convincing to a person who doesn't understand the difference between somebody with a strong opinion and a person being reasonable with the data that we've gathered. And all the person sees, they see two things. They see one person who is sure and one person who isn't. And who do you think that person will cling to when humans need to feel certain about every decision they make? Even if deep down they know there isn't enough data to give any path 100% certainty. People enjoy the world through food. People establish traditions and remember the world's past through food. People use food as a way to show that they're capable of making their own decisions. People need food to live. <laughs> Okay, complex marketing tactics by businesses manipulate behavior one way, fear-mongering propaganda manipulates people the other, and it is now your responsibility to help people understand there is a path between, and the decisions they make are their own. I hope you guys enjoyed this course. I am around for way more stuff. Let me know if you need anything at all.